Hello everybody, Alex Lambert here, and let's talk about that Martinsville race. We saw some fire, we saw some rain, we saw a huge pileup, and we saw two dominant race cars, and neither one of those dominant race cars ended up in victory lane. In fact, one of them didn't even finish in the top 15. Let's talk about all the action. I hope I can fit it all into about a 10-15 minute episode of NASCAR News. It's going to be tough because there was so much of it, but let's try and talk about it. First off, the winner of the race, like Mike Joy said on Fox, the reason they call it Martinsville is because of Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. has won at Martinsville two years in a row now. He won the spring race last year. He won the spring race this year. Uh, Chase Elliott won the last race at Martinsville, which was in the fall. It was the second to last race of the season. Uh, but Martin Truex Jr. has technically won both of the Martinsville night races. Last year's Martinsville night race was run under the lights completely. It started on time. Uh, there were no fans in the stands. This year, we did have some fans in the grandstands at Martinsville. Unfortunately, I was unable to get there. Uh, tickets were sold out very quickly for the second Martinsville night race. Um, but... This one maybe wasn't technically a night race. It did start under the lights, but most of the race was run on a Sunday afternoon. It did go into Sunday night, so it did finish under the lights. But technically, it was the Martinsville night race. Uh, it was just run during the day. Uh, and I remember a few years ago, uh, the Bristol race at night was called the Bristol night race. It was in the name of the race, and it was run on a Sunday afternoon. So, uh, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. It's it's it's, it's definitely strange, uh, but that's how it is. So Martin Truex Jr. has won both of the Martinsville night races. He's definitely got to figure it figured out. And do you remember about two years ago, maybe not even that long ago, we kept talking about how it was so uh, difficult for Martin Truex to win on a short track. He couldn't win on the short tracks. Every time he would dominate the mile and a half. Uh, went at the super speedways, but when we went to a short track, Truex would always come up short. Well, not anymore. Now it seems like he dominates all the short tracks. He wins at Martinsville. He's now won at Martinsville multiple times. He's won at Richmond multiple times. He's won two out of the last three at Richmond going into next week. Uh, he could get his third win in Richmond uh, 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 next week, you know, considering how, how dominant he has become at the short tracks. Uh, maybe not dominant today, uh, but certainly dominant at some of these short tracks in the past. Uh, a couple, I, I mentioned the two drivers that dominated uh, the race today. That was Ryan Blaney, or yesterday, that was Ryan Blaney and Denny Hamlin. Uh, those two cars were fast. Those two cars were trading the lead. Now, if you watch the race closely, you can tell that Denny Hamlin was faster on the restarts. Denny Hamlin would take off on the restarts uh, and, and jump out to a pretty decent sized lead, almost a second lead above Ryan Blaney, and then... Ryan Blaney would start to reel him in like a fishing rod. Um, uh, Denny's Hamlin car, Denny, Denny's car would just slow down on the long runs. He just couldn't handle the long run speed, and then Ryan Blaney would end up going by him. And that's kind of how the entire race went for the first 400 of the 500 laps. Uh, and then right at the end of the race, Ryan Blaney got a pit road speeding penalty, which put him in the back of the pack. And then Martin Trex Jr. was able to start on the front row uh, next to Denny Hamlin. And like I said, when Denny Hamlin lost that long run speed, we had a uh, close to a 50 lap run to finish out the race. That's what killed Denny Hamlin and Martin Trex Jr. took home the victory in Martinsville. By the way, Martin Trex Jr. will be the first driver to win multiple races in 2021 in week number eight. It took eight races to finally get a repeat winner. Martin Truex Jr. won at Phoenix early, earlier this year and now Martinsville. He also has more wins this year already than he did last year. The only win that Truex got last year, I believe, was the Martinsville race. So that's it. Uh, second place driver, Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott was very good as well. Now, I want to note something for Chase Elliott. Denny Hamlin, by the way, finished in the third position, and Ryan Blaney uh, finished way back there after the speeding penalty. He got it on the final pit stop. Uh, did not finish in the top ten in this race. But I want to note something that Chase Elliott did, and I mentioned this in a Martinsville race review maybe a couple of years ago. Maybe it was last year. Maybe it was, it was a little bit farther ago than that. The middle groove... Works well for Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott can pass cars. He passed Joey Logano and he passed a couple of other guys in the middle lane at Martinsville. Now, Martinsville is one of those tracks. It's kind of like the old Bristol. You have to stay on the bottom or you're going to get caught up in some trouble. If you get up top or get in that middle lane, uh, you kind of it's, it's not going to end well for you. Not Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott ran down. I, I want to say it was Denny Hamlin last year at Martinsville. Ran him down, or a couple years ago when I did this did this review, it was it was a, it was a little while ago. Chase Elliott was closing in on the leader, running the middle line with no cars around him, and then yesterday, 
Chase Elliott went by drivers on the middle line. If he couldn't get to the inside of them, he went to the outside of them, which is something that does not happen at all. Uh, it's almost unheard of to pass drivers on the high side at Martinsville, but Chase Elliott's pulled it off multiple times now, and he pulled it off yesterday, which is very interesting to me, and I would like to continue to watch and see what those Hendrick uh, Chevrolets continue to do as far as that goes, and Chase Elliott especially. That's just something very interesting to me that I've noted at the last couple of Martinsville races. Chase Elliott's running the middle line which is almost unheard of at martinsville by choice uh, but he does do that uh, very frequently all right now you might be wondering uh you're probably not wondering but if you are you might be wondering you know why the race ended on a sunday afternoon or a sunday night instead of the originally scheduled saturday night well that's simply because of weather and i feel like weather's killing this nascar season you have the daytona 500 the biggest race of the season uh has a six six hour delay maybe it was even longer than that kills TV ratings, just kind of gets rid of the excitement for the Daytona 500. Okay, that's that. We come to the second biggest race of the year, a highly anticipated race in Bristol, a first NASCAR race on dirt in over 50-something years. That race gets rained out because of terrible weather throughout the area that week. Okay, there's nothing NASCAR can do about this, by the way. It's just unfortunate. Then we go to the Martinsville night race, one that I was especially excited for. It's the first Martinsville night race with fans in the stands. Uh, it's probably going to be a pretty big deal. Saturday night under the lights at Martinsville, the shortest track on the circuit. That gets rained out after 43 laps with a delay, uh, with a delayed start. Very disappointing for NASCAR to continue to have these delays, but NASCAR is certainly working on it, and this is a topic that I had to mention in this video. At the road course tracks, NASCAR can race in the rain and on wet track surfaces, you know, as long as the racetrack isn't flooded out. We saw Xfinity races a couple years ago where the track would have standing water uh, and you can't race with standing water. And NASCAR will obviously note if there's standing water anywhere on the track, then you will have a delay. Or, of course, if there's lightning in all sports for safety reasons, you know, you're going to have to stop the, uh, you're going to have to halt competition. Lightning's a completely different story, but rain which affected the Martinsville race, the Daytona 500, and the Bristol Dirt race is very unfortunate. But NASCAR, like I said, they do have the rain tires for the road course races, but NASCAR is working on rain tires for the short, flatter racetracks. Two tracks come to mind, Loudoun, New Hampshire, and Martinsville, which we had a delay at this weekend. NASCAR is working on it. NASCAR did a test with those tires uh, this week while they headed into Martinsville, and I will be very interested to see how that works. Now, NASCAR has said that these racetrack tires, these rain tires for the shorter tracks, could be ready, could be ready by the Loudoun, New Hampshire race, which I believe is this summer. I want to say it's in July. Maybe it's a little earlier. Maybe it's a little bit later, but I want to say it is in uh, July. Uh, very interesting to me. I definitely want to see how that turns out. And now NASCAR said they can't race in the rain on these tires, but certainly can race once the rain stops and the track dries up a little bit. So you can't race, you know, in the rain like you can at the road course racetracks, but you can certainly race on a wet surface, which is a, dram a dramatic difference because you take a, you take away the time it took to dry the racetrack. We probably got kind of we probably could have got a lot more racing done on Saturday night. So I would be very interested to see how this turns out. And I'm glad that NASCAR is taking a step to help with these rain delays. You know, I've heard a few people make the arguments, well, no fan wants to watch a NASCAR race in the rain. I think as a NASCAR fan, I would rather, you know, watch a race in the rain, you know, from the grandstands even, uh, than I would uh, sit through a rain delay and watch Air Titans go around all day. So I'm glad NASCAR is taking a, a stand in this and trying to uh, fix these major problems. And NASCAR can't do but so much. They can't control the weather, but they can't control how they handle it. And trying to come up with more rain tires, and I think in, you know, the next 20, 30 years, uh, probably not even that long, probably the next 10 years, uh, we probably won't have to deal with rain delays quite as frequently as we do uh, right now in NASCAR. So very interesting. NASCAR continues to mo move forward with that. And I was very interested to see that, and I would like to know how that goes. That's really all there is to talk about after an incredible Martinsville race. There's one more driver I want to mention, which is Kyle Larson driving the five car. I did not mention him earlier. He once again got another top five, fifth place for Kyle Larson. Martinsville is one of his worst racetracks. I wanted to throw that in there at the end. He's going to be dangerous going into Richmond next week. That's right. We have the Richmond race next week. So kind of a Martinsville swing. Uh, I'm sorry, kind of a Virginia swing here. The two Virginia tracks will be run uh, back to back, which is uh, definitely exciting. Uh, two short tracks as well. I like, I like Martinsville a lot, but I really do like Richmond. I think we're in for some good racing. 
and I try to give you know what drivers to watch uh, going into Richmond. There's one guy I want you to watch going into Richmond, and that is Martin Truex Jr. Like I said, he's won two out of the last three races at that track, and he is very good at the short tracks. He just won the last race, which was at a short, short track. Definitely want to watch Martin Truex Jr. at Richmond. Another driver you might want to watch will be Joey Logano. He's been very fast at Richmond the last couple years as well. That's it. That's all there is to talk about. Hope you guys tune in to the race review after the Richmond race. If you're not first, you're last. And, of course, let's get rowdy.